The morning the war began, a Russian ship hovering off Snake Island tells Ukrainian soldiers, surrender or face our bombs. Their response, Russian warship, go f yourself. This now infamous exchange, a symbol of Ukraine's defiance. The ship was later sunk, the island recaptured. This small corner of the Black Sea today was chosen to mark 500 days of war. I want to thank each of our soldiers for these 500 days from right here, from this place, the place of victory. The army's counter-offensive has seen them closing in on the captured city of Bakhmut in the country's eastern Donetsk region. 40 miles north, in the retaken town of Liman, authorities say Russian shells killed eight just this morning. Civilian deaths are at the heart of an international dispute overshadowing a NATO summit in Vilnius next week. The Ukrainians are running out of ammunition. President Biden's decision to supply cluster bombs to the Ukrainian army has been roundly criticized by human rights groups and the UN. The weapons have a record of killing civilians, and 123 nations have signed a convention banning their use. Not an easy decision, and it's not, we're not signatories to that, that agreement, but I, um, it took me a while to be convinced to do it. But the main thing is they either have the weapon to stop the Russians now from their, keep them from stopping the Ukrainian offensive through these areas, or uh, they don't, and I think they needed them. Today, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak joined fellow NATO member Spain in disagreeing with the US president less than 24 hours before he lands in London for talks. The UK is signatory to a convention which prohibits the production or use of cluster munitions and discourages their use. We will continue to do our part to support Ukraine against Russia's illegal and unprovoked invasion. We've done that by providing heavy battle tanks and most recently long-range weapons. Discord too on when Ukraine should become a fully-fledged NATO member with the protective shield of its Article 5. An attack on one is an attack on all. Thus far, NATO leaders who say it should join have failed to provide a concrete plan. Zelensky's campaign for Ukraine's immediate accession took him to Turkey this week. Ukraine, not really. Undoubtedly, Ukraine deserves to be a member of NATO. I would like to emphasize again this point that I have always persistently defended. But with the US and Germany refusing to commit to a timeline, he's got another fight on his hands. One battle won here, though. Zelensky takes back with him the commanding officers of the Azov-style plant siege in Mariupol, another symbol of resistance against Putin's forces. The men were kept in Turkey following a prisoner swap brokered by Ankara, which Russia now accuses of violating the deal. Today, they return to a home still at war.